Hi, this is Stuart from designandtechnologysupport.com. In this video, we're going to look at two-point perspective sketching, and in particular, sketching two-point perspective boxes. Initially, the video will look at the basics of how to sketch a box in two-point perspective, and then how we can break a box down and divide the box into different sections. I hope you enjoy, please like and subscribe. So in this video, we're just going to have a look at some methods or a technique on how to sketch in two-point perspective. So firstly, two-point perspective. What we need to do is, I'm going to use a ruler for this just to demonstrate, not using measurements of the ruler. And two-point perspective works in that we have a horizon line. On our horizon line, we have two vanishing points, two points of perspective. Let's call this vanishing point one, and we'll call this one vanishing point two. So for two point perspective, the way I teach this is usually start with a vertical line. Now that vertical line doesn't need to be in the center of the vanishing points. It can be either side. However, if you make it too close to one of the vanishing points, the box that you're trying to draw will be very distorted. So let's not draw in the middle, let's draw it on one side here. I'm just going to draw vertical line. So I'll do that fairly lightly. Then on the vertical line, we just need to decide where the bottom corner of the box is going to be. So if I start and I'm just going to put a point here and let's call this point A, what I need to do is join A to both vanishing points. So there's my line. Which gives us the corner and the bottom two edges of the box. What we're then gonna do is add the length of the box and the depth of the box. So let's put another point somewhere on the line. We'll put a point here and we'll do one on this side, but we'll make this one a little bit shorter. So two points, we'll call this point B and we'll call this point C. So now what I need to do is connect point B to the vanishing point. So there's point B to the vanishing point and I want to connect point C to the vanishing point. Now I'm doing this very lightly and this is just giving me the footprint for my perspective box. Now in perspective sketching quite often if we start with that as a shape we don't need to draw the rest of the box but that becomes a more advanced technique. What we're going to do now is on point B we're going to draw a parallel line to the vertical line. So in simple terms, we're gonna draw another vertical line, but often these can go slightly wrong. So if we just say, let's keep it parallel to the existing one that we sketched, and we do the same on point C, just having a look. What I tend to do is have a look at the ruler here, just try and get that roughly about the same. Okay, and there's our line. And then what we need to do is decide on the height of our box. So I'm gonna put a point somewhere on this center, on the, sorry, center, this corner line that's closest to us, so let's put a point here and let's call that point D. So now point D needs to connect like point A did to both vanishing points. So it goes in one direction there and let's do it from point D to vanishing point two, off in that direction. And now we've got most points or corner edges of our box. We just need to do the final connection point. So. The bit that I notice that students sometimes do wrong is they think that if we get our new point here, we're gonna call this point E and point F. Common mistake can be where students connect points E and F together, the shortest distance, which actually makes like a, a pie wedge. We don't want that. What all corners do in two-point perspective when we're drawing a box is connect to one of the vanishing points. It's already connected to this vanishing point, so we connect it, of course, to vanishing point two. So we'll just do that with a light line, and we repeat that process for point F with the vanishing point over here, like so, which hopefully you can see there gives us our box with point G at the back. So we've got A, B, C, D, 
E, F and G. And here is our perspective box. There are other things that we can do just to find centres of the perspective box at the beginning, which is just to connect corner to corner. If we do things like this, this is a technique which actually helps us. It helps us later on to work out where shadows go. It can help us where, if we want to find the middle of a, a shape and how we can use additional lines to make sure that perspectively things are correct. So let me just add this and I'll do the same just on the top of the box. And then just to show you in perspective how all that works, I'm gonna join here D just to point G at the back. So if I now have this cross from A to F and C to D, if I on that cross now draw a vertical line through that cross point here. So just trying to make sure that that remains vertical. Let's say something like that. Where this hits here, this point now, if I connect this to this vanishing point, hopefully that should go pretty much through the center of this point here, which it does slightly off probably because I've missed my point actually there. If I just correct that, and this is in terms of accuracy, if you're doing this with a ruler, you would obviously want to be really accurate. And you can see actually now when I correct it, it is through the center. I could repeat that process here. If we just do a vertical line up to that point and then to the vanishing point over here, should now link and go through the center as it does there. That's a really useful method to be able to break our box up at the end. Just so you can see that a little bit more clearly, I'll just fine line the box now with my pen just to demonstrate this principle of two-point perspective. Now, while I'm doing this, the one thing that I do want to point out is that what we are going to be looking at is two-point perspective sketching, which means that we want to try and do this without the aid of a ruler. That's really important because we are trying to sketch now, ultimately, of course, with any sketch, you can use tools to help. And if a ruler does help, then that's fine. But it will slow the process down. And actually, if we're just sketching out ideas, we are and we can be allowed just to get it, I suppose, slightly wrong and just to be a little bit more free flowing. There you can see I've got my two point perspective box. This next example of two-point perspective, two-point perspective, going to not use a ruler at all. So in terms of sketching, I want to follow all of the, uh, the, the rules or the stages, should I say, of sketching out two-point perspective with a ruler, but to try and do this freehand. So what I'm gonna do to begin with is imagine where my horizon line is. So I'm, if I imagine on the page here that it's approximately around there somewhere. So I'm going to start off by sketching a vertical line. On my vertical line, I'm going to add a point for the top. Uh, for the bottom of the object, I'll do a second one over here for the top. So I'm only going to map that in already. And then what I'm going to do is decide on how severe I want the bottom line. Okay, this bottom V shape that we're going to sketch. The more severe is the more extreme the angle of perspective. So if we start off and we don't want something too severe, We'll just do a line, something like that. Now, I've not got this at the right angle for my page. If I just move my arm slightly, perhaps I'll get a, a nicer line like that. So I'm actually gonna use this line here. Okay, I'm gonna do the same here. So we'll just, so something kind of like that, not far from a perfect line okay, in this video, but I'm trying to keep my sheet still and move my body, which is not normally how I sketch. So let's do a vertical line on this side. Okay, and we'll do a vertical line on this side. Then now here's the top of my box, which I identified before. And the, the key part now is not to make this next line parallel. If I make it parallel, I'm not sketching in perspective because perspective, we go to a vanishing point. So what I need to do is flatten the line. I need to change this angle. Instead of it being like that, it needs to be flatter on the top. And the higher it goes towards the horizon line, of course, it goes flatter, flatter until eventually we can't see the top of the box. So the best way I teach this normally is actually to change the angle 
of the page that you're sketching on. And by changing that angle, if you normally do a line like this, by changing the angle of the page, you're automatically changing the angle of your perspective, which makes life a lot easier. So if there is my original line, if I now do my flattened box, so this is natural for me now about this angle here. So let's just sketch in my new line. And hopefully you can see that this distance here is shorter than that distance there. So let's do the same on this one. So that's more or less my, my line to begin with. So I'm gonna flatten my page like so. And I'm gonna do this instead of going from right to left, which is unnatural for me. I'm gonna go from this side. Okay, just missed slightly. Okay, like so. So normally I would be turning my page upside down to do lines like this, just so I get them more natural and correct. So I've got my line here then, and I want the top of the box from this point here. So I want to sketch, but again, I don't want it to be parallel. So what I'm going to do is flatten my angle again of my sheet. By flattening my angle, just helps me sketch my line, wanting to make sure hopefully that all of these lines look like they're going to meet somewhere off my page. If that line isn't flat enough, you don't think, find it flat enough, then do it again. Notice what I'm doing, just changing the angle of my page a little bit more. Okay, perhaps something like this line now. And then lastly, I want to do this line here again, so it's meeting these two over on this side. So let's change my angle of my page. That looks probably about right for me, about something like that. And let's get my rough line in, something like that, which gives me my perspective box. So if I just very quickly now darken that in, just with my blue pencil, okay, you can see hopefully now Here is the box. Let's go to my corner here, like that, and I'll just turn this one round. Okay, so there's my starting point, and actually there was the bottom corner edge of my box. Now, if we now want to look at getting our sheet and then breaking our form down, okay, bre breaking down the sheet, we can look at doing that by, as we did before, finding the centers. Line. So this is approximately, it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm just doing a ghost line and then trying to work out roughly where about middle is. I'll just do that on the top, something like that. Okay, which is just helping me break my box down a little bit more. Okay, so you can see that it's, it is considerably harder without a ruler but this is what we need to get used to for faster, more, dyna more dynamic sketching. So what I'm gonna do now is actually just gonna get this box and I'm gonna break it into two boxes, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to identify a line point here and I'm going to identify a point there. So what I want to do, and I really, I suppose I, should, I could do it on this one, but I'm just for demonstration purposes. So what I want to do now is, is bring this line this way. But what I don't want to do is make sure it's parallel to here because of course it's coming from the vanishing point to this point. So it should get bigger here than it is there. Okay, so if I imagine that and just change the angle of my sheet, it's probably something like that. So it should be different than here, but however, it shouldn't be level with that one. So currently mine's slightly wrong. It probably wants to be about there. So if I just change the angle now, to demonstrate that, okay, there's my line, and that's correct. This one is slightly different than this one because, as of course, the line goes up, it flattens. So I'll do the same here, okay? So we'll do a line approximately something like that, okay? Misses where my point is, it doesn't matter in this instance. And then what I'm going to do is do the same on this side from my points going this way, okay? So that looks parallel, perhaps not right then. So we probably want it to be about there. So let me just, okay, something like that. And on this one, there's my point. Okay, something like that. So now I have essentially a sandwich. You know, we've got three layers. What I want to do then is just map in this corner because and this point because these become corners of a bottom box so if i follow my perspective guides okay so it would be similar to this one but slightly flatter so sorry slightly flatter that way okay so what i want to do is get that corner if 
through my chingo wing like that. And then this corner to the opposite vanishing point. Okay, there we go. Something that's slightly wrong. That looks better, something like that. So if I then press a little bit harder with my pencil, what you can see now is that I've got a box on a box. If I rub out this line and this line here, and I've got a, a floating box. Okay, but that skill of being able to break a form down, very important. If we continue that, that last technique, and what we do is we will add on on the top here. So I'm going to just, as you will see, just going to follow approximately my lines here. So I'm just sketching. And then I'm going to add a vertical line here, going straight down. There's my vertical line. Okay, let's look at the thickness of our work. Let's use this as a guide here, going on the outside. Okay, and then thinking where that meets here. Okay, so probably somewhere about that point there would give me the inside of a box. And if we applied thick and thin lines, then, oops, let's just hopefully we can get some slightly thicker line here, like that. And of course, we've got thin on the top here, thicker on this edge, because if it's an edge where something can go on the other side, it will become a thicker edge. I'm just going to transfer pencils for one moment. Okay, like so. And then we'll just get this one in here. Okay, and lastly, of course, we would just need to check, does this one at the bottom, does it actually appear in, in this instance, it's, it's hidden. So we have a decision in terms of thick lines. If we left this line thin and this line thin here, what we're actually saying is there's like a material here. It's not gone all the way through. By making this a thick line, by making this, a thick line, what we're actually stating is that this is a hole that's going all the way through. Okay, so we make that and that one there a thick line. And that's, then we would do exactly the same here. And so on. And this is how we use thick and thin lines in two-point perspective, okay, to give us our sketch.